Like just a guaranteed rank four bear. Okay, that is, that is silly. Wow, this is a huge hidden change. All right, guys, we are back for another day of season eight. And uh, it looks like we need to kill 10 mage enemies in forests and rock locations. Another easy task, so let's go do that. Uh, this episode, we are going to talk about a lot of the hidden changes. And uh, one that you will notice, I think everyone will notice right away, is that when you are mounting, you see a horse. Um, instead of, in the middle of the circle, there's a horse instead of uh, the normal Viking helmet. And so that's a, a little nice touch. Um, also, when you match in a raid... Um, the text uh, looks differently. Uh, looks different. It's got uh, kind of. It just looks a little cleaner. Uh, let's go look for some mage type enemies. There's a mage type enemy. One. Look at all of these. Let's do it. Need a strong pickaxe. Let's see. Some of the other changes. Obviously, one we talked about in both of the other episodes for this season is. This right here, you see those two axes? Those two axes are what you used to see when you would do this. Uh, but now when you try to place a, a stun trap, you get this. Also, so it's a almost a second, maybe a whole second. You'll notice just then I almost did it and, and the stun trap went on cooldown. So that's like in some ways two hidden changes together um, obviously this is a big change helps with uh, preventing the game from having uh, stun locking as much which is very helpful and obviously these tombs this whole concept is a new concept of Frostborn so that uh, can be considered um, a change and the reason why I call them hidden changes is actually from a long time ago if you've been on this channel for more than three or four years uh, there used to be changes that they had in the dev notes and then there was changes that weren't in the dev notes and changes that weren't in the dev notes were hidden changes and um, they kind of changed their system now that they give me you know give early access give us early access and so now everything's a hidden change which is uh, you know kind of fun um, there we go finish the mages return to the war chief in the temple of the ancestors all right let's do this so completing these um, the idea of using the the pickaxe to clear out these shrines to the temp to the goddess hell um, that is a new concept in Frostborn. It's not a new concept to Kafir. It's actually something that uh, Grim Soul Survival introduced several years ago. So it's kind of nice that we, you know, I don't know. It's kind of a, an interesting touch. I think it's going to be better in Frostborn because people are going to want to gather those um, resources and it's going to make the zones more full. That's something that was really good about Season 7. So for... When you get them, here's 10 of them I'm going to use. Can't do it while mounted. All right. Um, this concept is also kind of new. And there we go. I think we're good on this. Let's go ahead and turn this in. 40. Split this up. There we go. 61. That works out good for me. Except. All right. Two days in. And we've got uh, 60 each time. And uh, getting the 20 points. Go to the next one. We appreciate no task for you today. So my guess is uh, it's going to be just the same as season seven. Um on this one where you get to do 20 every day uh, for a week and then 30 every day for a week and then 40 and then 50 every day for a week and uh, and then we're gonna end with around 900 let me see if I'm right 
Do, 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 do. Yep, same amount of points. So it was good. Season 7 was a really good one. Um, some other really big hidden changes. Uh, they didn't add any mounts, uh, so there's no, no hidden changes there. Uh, these are all old um, mounts. Uh, they didn't add any classes, but they did add a ton of new weapons and some new boxes. So let me go over those real quick. Uh, the boxes, they've got the hunter pack. Uh, if you see my other episodes, you'll see what these have. Um, they're kind of random, but you know, one thing that's kind of nice is the blacksmith pack. Uh, all of them have a chance of dropping elixirs. And elixirs are really good for PvP. So, um, that's, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a good one. The, the hunter pack will have hunter elixirs and, but they also have some other random things. Uh, I think the hunter pack has speed potions. Uh, this has iron. Um, oh, this, the hunter pack has leather and a few other resources. Lumberjack, I think, has wood, but it, I'm not sure if it has any elixirs it is offering. This one, the Cure Pack, has the Survivor Elixir, uh, which allows you to heal, you know, 20% more. And uh, But it also has bandages, which can be nice. They added seven new types of weapons. The Freya Staff, the Freya Weapon Line, which there's all legendaries, and they're all really good. Uh, let me let me go over them real quick. They've got the phrase flask, which seems it doesn't seem that impressive as far as skills go, um, but it it is a very impressive flask. Uh, it does a lot of damage over time. Then they added the uh, Freya staff. Freya staff is a support staff. It increases healing by thirty percent, which is extremely powerful for. A healer that basically increases the healing the same amount that going from level two to level three to level four is so it's kind of like the Freya staff creates a level five healer and even though there actually technically is no level five healer in the game uh, using a Freya staff essentially upgrades you into that it definitely makes the healer back into the game lately we've been seeing a lot of shaman play some I'm trying to get the sorcerer to be a support class, but this is probably gonna make the healer uh, meta again. We've got Freya's Mace, which is a heavy melee weapon, and uh, it does 70 DPS, which is great. Every fist strike immobilizes enemy nearby enemies, so it's an area uh, for half a second. So immobilizing an enemy does, may not seem like a whole lot, but that can really disrupt people, and the fact that you can do this every fist strike is going to uh, make this a really good move for if, if, if your team has a thrasher. Um, that might be something that we see people playing a lot or a duelist. This, this weapon will, will really kind of slow people down, slow down a team. And, um, and so it's a, it's a really good, really good solid weapon. Also, some of the other weapons like the combat staff will do more damage to mobilized enemies. So this can kind of pair well if you've got a team full of uh, Freya, stat, Freya weapons. The Freya Sword and Shield, every third block uh, summons Freya's Roots, which deals five damage, and it seems like it also immobilizes enemies for two seconds uh, in that area, which is really powerful. It also increases the block up to seven, uh, which when you triple that as a protector that's 21 that's a very strong shield and then the dps on this sword and shield is 67 which is very high so really this is gonna make the protector uh, you know just it, the protector has always been strong but this weapon is gonna make a big difference uh, in kind of bringing that uh, keeping the protector in play in team and potentially solo PvP. Mostly team though. Freya's dagger uh, looks really OP. It's got 70 DPS and a 62 damage attack. Um, it, it does 19 per second poison damage. And it also has a 30% of the weapon damage applies to the target once um, over seven, basically over the course of seven seconds. And that damage over time ignores 15% of armor. So 
Honestly, I am cu I'm curious to see how this weapon plays out. I'm going to see if I can't unlock it before the season is out. Um, I'm wondering if that da poison damage 19 per second is connected. Uh, I honestly, I'm not exactly sure. This weapon just seems really OP because if it is actually 68.9 DPS plus a 19% poison damage of true damage that seems like it's just way too powerful way too broken but we'll see how it plays out we just need to get it get our hands on it and and see what it looks like um the freya's crossbow every seven shot um, every seventh shot immobilizes the target for 0.3 seconds and poisons it poison deals 30 percent of weapon damage for four seconds um so this is 72 DPS, which is very high. Um, and then it also has that 30% of weapon damage over time for four seconds. This, that, that every seventh shot immobilizes the target for 0.3 seconds seems like nothing. And uh, I think in this case, it really is nothing. It, you know, every seventh shot, it, it'll disrupt them a little bit, but it just immobilizes them. Uh, it might barely help someone if it's a if it's an archer versus a melee character uh might keep the person off them a little bit or might help them you know get a kill but it won't be much not definitely nothing you can really count on and then lastly the seventh weapon is the Freya's combat staff uh which inflicts 25 percent more damage to mobilize targets so this weapon may not seem like a whole lot um, but with a DPS of basically 64, when you include basically 25% of that, that gets the DPS up to about 80. And, you know, when you've got a fire mage with full stacks and definitely fully ruined out, 80 DPS is insane. So you're probably going to see some fire mages and some illusionists with, uh, bolas, and they are going to just absolutely shred you with that 80 dps it's gonna be uh you're gonna want some of these other freya weapons to fight back okay so those are the seven new weapons uh that's seven new changes uh another big change that i've already talked about in some of my other videos are the rune hammers this is a new concept that that kafir is trying out they want to get our advice on it they want to hear our feedback uh you basically throw this and it it stuns them for a half a second, which is nice. That disrupts them. But then it neutralizes the effect of all their runes for 12 seconds. This is going to be an extremely powerful gadget for underdog players. Uh, being able to slow down people that spend a lot of money on runes uh, by kind of neutralizing that effect. You can, you'll be able to, you know, 12 seconds of, of them having less armor less damage less hit points um it will it will definitely equal the playing field for those of you who don't have enough money to spend on lots and lots of runes all right let's check the shop to see if there's anything new in the shop uh so far i have not seen anything new uh looks like we've got all kind of the basic stuff you know, having flasks in here with the two-handed weapons might be new. I think this is a change uh, to the game. And then we've got nothing new there, nothing new there, nothing new there, and nothing new here. But sadly, we do have one big new thing uh, that you know, changes the game quite a bit, and that is they added more VIP. So we've got, uh, we've already know about the first five VIP status. You can get up to a bonus 10 he uh, 20 health, which doesn't change the game, but it looks like they added five more VIP statuses, uh, and that increases more bonus health. Um, Let's see these other st so all of these are new changes. Uh, we've got um, bonus, you know, chance of getting rank three mounts is a little bit better. 
extra two star items from the store and packs. These honestly, these are not that big of a deal. Uh, the bonus health is a big deal. Uh, really does uh, tweak the game. Um, and then we've got increases of chance of getting an uncommon item and a daily gift. Again, not that big of a deal. Bonus mastery points with each donation. That's helpful, but nothing we haven't already seen um, before. Then there's more bonus health here. Uh, and there's bonus damage and sanctums. That's not that big of a deal. Um, that's that and that and the mercenary marks is already a pay to win thing so not not the biggest deal but that bonus health is concerning um and then you've got chance for three star items from packs um daily gifts extra influence points and daily gifts honestly none of that's that big of a deal and then more bonus health a lot of legendary items which could be an issue but probably not that big of a deal um a lot of these gifts aren't you know it just makes it easier for paying customers to get stuff quicker but frostborn has it available to free to play players on most of these things um getting a level four rank four mount is available to free to play players pretty easily nowadays um getting um getting a lot of these other things are pretty available the, the biggest issue is the bonus health um now vip can get you up to plus 50 health which is a lot of health and that rune hammer does not lower your vip bonus um so this is a really bad change these are are 15 really bad changes or maybe even more if you consider all the items you can get um so yeah this is honestly this is a pretty bad change i really don't like that they did this um mainly just because it makes it to where if you're he if you're heavily vip you're gonna you're gonna have 50 extra hit points over someone else especially as a new player that is just an insane advantage and so yeah, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Uh, I hope they consider changing that, um, tweaking that. Um, I do, of course, want the devs to get money. Oh, and you just get a rank 4 bear? Like, just a guaranteed rank 4 bear? Holy crap. Okay, that is... That is silly. I wonder if it's really hard to get VIP 10. Because if it's not hard to get VIP 10, that's insane. Every VIP out there is going to have a rank 4 bear. Every, I don't know how much it costs to get to VIP 10. But I bet it's a lot. I hope it's a lot. Oh my gosh. That's insane. Okay. Well, I don't like the, the still the health is the biggest issue, but a bear is a big deal. A level 4 bear definitely is not a is not just a small gift. Wow. Wow. Okay. Well, yeah, I don't know. I don't like that either. These, uh, you know, you can you can get them. This doesn't bother me because we can go kill the pay to win players and get the legendary stuff from them. Uh, this, you can't get the bear from them. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. And then the bonus health obviously is a big advantage, uh, which I don't like. So. Uh, this is a this is a rough change. I don't like that change, but um, yeah, those those are a lot of changes. But there we go. Um, I don't know if we can call this uh, hidden changes. Obviously, this area is from season three. Uh, they changed quite a bit of it, though. They they added these rooms, uh, and they removed uh, this the doorway to the temple. But you can see it's still there. They just kind of closed the door. 
Um, they added this guy with his chest over here. Um, and they added this little, I think this gazebo's new. And they took away some of the bushes. So they really changed this area. This is new. These podiums are not new. I don't know why they're still here. Um, but this is all from season three, the storyline season. Um, and, but that's cool. It's good on them for, for, you know, they put a lot of work in all these locations. So being able to reuse a location like this, reuse, um, the animation that they have here, reuse this world marker here. Um, another big change, uh, is in the clans. Uh, so let me go over to the clan, uh, base real quick and kind of talk about, um, some of the changes in the clan base and how the clan system works. All right, here we are in the clan base. Uh, let me change the graphics. It looks very weird right now. All right, here we are, the clan base. Um, none of this has been changed. There's a lot of stuff, um, that this is all similar. Uh, but then there is this, which you can get reputation with the portal master. And once your team gets 6,200, then you unlock this thing right here. And this is the ancient golem, a fragment of one of the nine worlds where you will find a battle with the mighty guardian of the portal. So, uh, here, if you click portal, uh, you can see that at first you need to kill the young golem that, that requires some time. Uh, once you kill him, then you unlock the ability to to do the Ancient Golem. And my clan has not finished killing the Ancient Golem yet. Unlocking the resources of these Golems, you'll see here in the Info tab, uh, you're going to get uh, Fish Glue, Dragon Scales, Nails, all of these things. Some of you guys have a lot of this stuff. This is a really good... This is actually something I've been asking Frostborn to, to add is basically some of us have a million pliers. And so now we have a place to utilize, uh, to input some of those resources, donate. Um, so I could go back, this account is pretty poor. I could go back and donate, you know, several, a ton of pliers, and that would allow me to get uh, these rewards. Um, but in addition to these rewards, it would give me reputation in this line, which is another hidden change um, for this uh, for this season, where now there's this quest line, like a season quest line, but it's in the clan area. So this is a big change for the clan area. You get a lot of resources. Nothing like a season uh, change, but something still nonetheless. So just to show you how this looks, we're gonna go ahead and place some pliers in here. 20 pliers is worth 40 points and so let's go ahead and do hit contribute even though the young golem already has all the things basically what it does here is it gives us points here so now we have 40 points and that gave us a pickaxe and a kyrgyz staff so this is really easy to do um and then we can go over here to the portal and switch over to the ancient golem and Ancient Golem requires the same uh, resources, uh, or a little bit different. You'll notice that there's Forge Fasteners and Varnish and Alchemical Powder, which is, you know, a little bit more valuable stuff. Uh, they do still have metal parts, which a lot of us have a lot of. So, um, and then look at this. We've got Legendary Seals of Magic. Uh, now, unfortunately, there, there none of these legendary weapons are in our... Um, in our crafting menu. So you can't craft anything legendary, but it is interesting that they did add um, these legendary um, seals because that is, um, well, one, you can get more points in Odin's for your classes, but... Um, it is it is probably a sign of what is to come that there will be legendary marks and our seals and we can then use those to craft legendary weapons theoretically and then they have these cores that says use for crafting sets of armor uh, which 
Um, it looks like, uh, and then there's rune bags, which is really interesting. Um, so there, it looks like they're adding some legendary stuff. They might actually make it to where, um, you are going to be able to craft this legendary stuff from this blacksmith down here. Um, they've been advertising this blacksmith as something we're going to be able to craft things here in the future here soon wow this is a huge hidden change so uh maybe they did already add it it looks like they did add it they added the legendary all the legendary gear which um i've you can see here um uh, we we've already seen these right i have seen these from other episodes they've never had it into the game this is a new one let me let me check this out so Heavy Elm, um, if you get all set, the whole set, you're going to get plus 30 max health. You're going to get uh, duration of control effects minus 25. That is really good. Plus um, 12 bonus armor. Uh, and this, you can already see that this is the clearly the best armor in the game. So 12 on top of incredibly powerful armor. Um, and, and then, uh, area damage resistance by, it is 17%. So that's pretty unbelievable. And then to be able to craft these things, um, be able to craft Freya's weapons, that is pretty insane. Honestly, I was not expecting this. So um okay well that is a huge change obviously this is um you know uh 19 uh new craftable items and um this is another four items and added to the game on top of the seven new weapons that i talked about earlier um so you can see the the hidden changes are adding up really quickly uh there's you know two or three changes to this area right here um clan blacksmith okay so little dialogue that's another little small change um and then you've got the clan fight see here if you've got a lot of the resources you need it you can add up in points really fast and unlock these uh the ability to fight these guys and you get a lot of points really quickly. Take 16 items just like that, it giving free silver, uh, giving some mounts, and then towards the end you get a lot of uh, purple items, including a lot of elixirs and then some purple weapons at the end. So that's a lot of, honestly, I mean, normally the way I would count hidden changes uh, is, you know, this is basically 50 more uh levels and then um so i just add i just say that's 50 changes so um yeah this this update has a lot of changes um and and oh by the way this this used to be this gate right here used to be over here uh and then there was another gate here and then there was a gate here um, I'm sure that they may add that uh, later on uh, more clan bosses depending on how well this goes right if if clans really enjoy doing this together fighting the bosses together uh, which I imagine they will I mean co-op is one of the most fun aspects of this game so you can see here that I mean because I have quite a bit of resources saved up I can almost do this young golem just by myself which is nice it makes the grind just a little bit less intense i think over time it may get pretty excessive especially because the golem really doesn't drop a whole lot of loot compared to what we're dropping here but then again it does drop purple gear and uh once you get those legendary items it might be worth turning in you know all of these extra items that you get um to to be able to get some legendary gear so it might be worth the grind uh we'll just have to see 
over time. Looking over here for more changes. No, doesn't seem like they've added any changes to this boat. Um, and then there's this clan hall. Doesn't look like there's any changes here. Uh, but again, they changed the blacksmith and they changed this. So they are making quite a bit of uh, changes here to the, the clan uh, center. Uh, it looks like they might have gotten rid of the chicken. Uh, I don't... Oh, no. There's the chicken. Chicken's still here. That's awesome. Okay, good. hope the chicken never goes away. Chicken. Alright. Um, yep. I think we've covered all of the changes here. Uh, I covered the changes in the zone. Uh, there was, I covered a lot of conceptual changes. Uh, there's stuff that they added to Frostborn in this update that even though we've seen them in other games like Grim Soul, they've never had it in this game. And so that is, um, you know, and I think it is going to be better. Honestly, the concept of doing tasks and the idea of going out into zones it makes the zones feel more alive. It increases PVP. It really does uh, help the livelihood of Frostborn. These have been really good updates. I'm so impressed. I can't wait to get back home so that I can, you know, use my normal microphone and have my face cam. And hopefully, I'm going to try to wait until I get home to do the Golem fights uh, because it is what you know. It's one of the epic in-game content elements of this game and and it's just new it's new and i think it's going to be a lot of fun but i want you all to see my reaction as i fight the golem the young golem and the ancient one and see his loot and all of that stuff so i'm probably going to wait um until i get home uh and then when i do i'll be posting those videos all right guys see you next time